Good evening, everyone. You join me on the 18th floor up above the city of Indianapolis, Indiana tonight. Um, I am in, I think, a courtyard Marriott? I don't know. I travel a lot for work. Um, I spent, in, in 2022, which was my most travel-heavy year, I spent over 100 nights in hotels that year. I think last year was close to 70 nights, and as of right now, I'm at like 40-something nights um, in hotels for 2024, and the year isn't even over yet. Um, so I do a lot of traveling for work. And so I thought for this episode of Ask Zach, I would tell the greatest hotel story and the worst hotel story that I have through all of my travels. Um, this will pertain to work. I do have quite the personal horror story when I was traveling for personal, uh, but I will maybe I'll save that for another time. If you guys beg hard enough in the comments, maybe I'll share that story at another date. But I figured if you'd like to hear some horror stories from on the road, here they are, and I'm going to share them with you now in this actually quite luxurious hotel that Toyota is paying for. So thank you, Toyota. Let's start off with the good, the best hotel that I've stayed in for work. This was in the summer of 2023. If you guys remember, I went out and I filmed a Polaris Slingshot at a Polaris Slingshot event in Southern California. It was just south of LA. I flew in and out of LAX. Um, I'm trying to think of where, something beach, Long Beach. It was in Long Beach, Long Beach, California. And I'll show some clips here. Luckily, I have tons of clips for this story. Don't really have a bunch of clips for the other story. But I went to a slingshot, or I was invited to a slingshot event. Basically how these events work is through PR people for the company. So Polaris in that occasion reached out to me, or their PR person, shout out Chandler, love you buddy. He reached out and said, hey, we're putting together this trip. We want some journalists to come out to Southern California. Would this work for you? Would this work? And he sent me the days, I think it was like the 27th of June. And I said, yes. And so they work out all the airfare. They work out the hotels. They usually give you a prepaid card for food. Um, if they don't have food themselves, a lot of times they'll have like banquet halls or, you know, at least in Polaris's case, they took us out to dinner the night before. We had this beautiful taco dinner. Um, and then they gave us a $100 Visa gift card for the next day for all the food for that day. They're like, we don't have food planned for you, um, but here's a gift card to do that. And that's actually, um, as I said, right now I'm in Indianapolis for Toyota. They gave me a $250 card for gas uh, and food during this whole trip, which is super nice. I'm not, it's the coolest thing in the whole wide world uh, by far. Um, but then also they'll be like, Hey, do you have a frequent flyer mile account on, you know, uh, Polaris, this trip was, uh, American airlines. So I sent them my uh, frequent flyer card so I could get points or, or miles for the trip. Anyway, they handle everything. They just send you an email. It's like, here's where you're going. Um, and they also gave us, I think it was $50 worth of lift, uh, to get to and from the airport, which was more It might've been a hundred bucks. Um, but it's more than enough uh, to get to and from the airport. They cover everything. And so Polaris said, hey, do you want to come out to L.A. or Long Beach? Um, this time they booked my flight from O'Hare to LAX, fly out, get picked up by an Uber, really nice lady, and driven to, oh, God, I don't remember the resort name, but I'll start putting some pictures in here. It was a five-star spa on the beach on the beach. And so I get there, they give me a robe, they give me slippers. I mean, the whole nine, I get this nice view. I mean, take a look here. I'll show some videos while I'm talking. This room was absolutely amazing. There was a spa built in. Um, they had a, a, a blue Volkswagen bus sitting out front. It was absolutely the cat's meow. It was so flipping cool. Um, and so I got my stuff. I went downstairs. I went and walked just across a single parking lot or a single crosswalk to the beach, dipped my toes in the Pacific Ocean, came back, hung out for a while, just enjoyed sitting on the uh, on the balcony. And then we were called the dinner. We all met up at dinner, had dinner with the Polaris PR reps. Of course, they covered it. And then I came back to my hotel room. They had sent up, um, it was chips and salsa, I think some like vodka or I, it was like, I think Don Julio or something like that. I don't drink. So I, I actually, or Patron maybe. 
whatever it was. There's some alcohol uh, and limes and all that stuff, which I don't drink, so I just left that stuff there. And then they gave us a swag bag of Polaris legging or not leggings, geez, Polaris joggers, which I still wear all the time. I have a Polaris shirt that's a V-neck, not really my style, but I wear that frequently too. And all this like really cool swag stuff on top of this really cool hotel. It was amazing. Um, and then the next day we come outside, they show us how to put the helmets on and then they went, go drive the cars for eight hours. Uh, I think we, it was nine in the morning and we had to return them by six, um, which I returned mine way beforehand. I didn't use the full time. Um, and they gave us the prepaid cards and they're like, go have lunch. Here are some routes that we plan for you. That's always a big thing on drive events is they'll like either have like private property that you drive on or they'll have like a route to like take you through cool scenic spots. They took us through the canyons of L.A. and all this stuff. And then I hopped on a plane at 11 o'clock at night and landed in Chicago at 6 a.m. So my first true red eye experience, which was not great, but that is the best hotel experience I've had during the job. And that was all covered by Polaris, which is something that's really, really cool. But now let's talk about the worst hotel experience. Now, to be fair, <laughs> this one I booked myself. Um, so I really thought someone was standing in the corner. I really don't like being in hotel rooms alone. That actually scared me. And for good reason. So I'll share. So when they're sponsored trips like this, or not even really sponsored trips, it's not like, oh, Toyota is sponsoring me. They're just like, hey, you know, for this instance where I'm sitting right now, they were like, hey, we'd love for you to just come to this Toyota drag racing event. We'll put you up in a hotel. We'll give you a car and food. And I was like, sure, cool. They don't have any like paperwork saying, I have to make a video. I have to do this. I have to do this. I could just go and enjoy myself and go home and no harm, no foul. Now I am going to make a video because I like doing that, um, but th there's no written contract to do anything. Anyway, that's how this stuff works. But also, I travel on my own to get my own content to film and stuff. And I pay for all of that. Now, it is a tax write-off, but I pay for all of it. I book it myself. I plan it myself. It's under my, you know, all that stuff. And so I went to Kansas City in, I believe, 2022. So I booked it all myself. I was seeing a friend and then woke up the next day and drove an NA Miata and a Lil Red Express truck. This was all in Kansas City. And so it was two nights, um, one for one day for leisure, one day for filming. And then I was going to head home. It's about eight hours from Chicago. And so I get in night, night number one, log into the hotel or, or get into the hotel. And it's taking a little while for me to, you know, get in and like get them uh, get my key card and whatever. It's like kind of taking the lady a while, whatever. And it was a bunch of people. So I go up to my hotel room. I put my stuff down. Um, I always keep my filming equipment with me. Even if I'm doing personal stuff, even if I'm just leaving the room for like a few hours, I always take my filming equipment with me because I can never replace it. Or at least, you know, the footage that's on it. So I'm lucky I did it this time. So I go to my room, get situated, put my bag down, brush my teeth, um, put some stuff in the refrigerator, and then I go and see some friends. It's nice. You know, we have a good time. We're hanging out and all this stuff. So I get back to the hotel, spend the night, sleep, all good. Next day, get up, grab my filming equipment, but I leave like the water bottles and toothbrush and all that stuff. I leave that at the hotel because I don't, I'm going to be back that night. So I go out and I film the Miata, I film the Little Red Express, get some work done and then see my friends again. We catch up for dinner. We do this nice dinner and all this stuff and we're hanging out and it's all good. And I get back to the hotel around 11 o'clock again. But the night before, I thought I heard voices outside my room. I thought that that was really weird. So I come back now for the second night and I go up to my room, swipe the key card, nothing. Flashes a little red light. Okay, that's weird. Swipe it again, red light flashes. I'm like, okay, I know this is my room because it was room 420 and you remember that number. You just do. You just do. So I went down to the desk and I was like, hey, my key card isn't working anymore, room 420. And the lady goes, oh, okay. And then she goes, you've been drinking tonight? And I was like, all right, first of all, none of your business. But second of all, no, I legitimately hadn't been. I was pretty tired. I so I probably looked like I was, but I was like, no. And she was like, okay. So she confirms that I'm staying in room 420 and she goes, go up and try it again. I was like, okay. So I go back up there, try it two more times. Red light comes on and I hear voices 
again, like coming through the door. It's like, this is weird. So I go back down. I'm like, still not working. And she goes, okay, let me go up there with you. And I said, I think there might be people in my room. And she looks and she's like, no, you're, you're room 420. You were here last night, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, thank you. So we go up there together. She swipes her MasterCard, opens the door, and it gets stuck on the stop. And she closes it real quick. The TV was on in the room. The room was dark. And the, the front desk lady goes, oh, my God, there's people in there. And I went, yeah, I freaking told you. I told you there was people. I'm, like, losing my mind at this point. And so she goes, okay, well, this isn't your room anymore. And I went, I had stuff in there. I mean, I just had like water bottles and like a t-shirt and, and, and my toothbrush. I guess it's all gone. So she assigned me the room next door. So I get into that room. I'm freaked out because people are in my old room. They must have walked in and seen that the bed was all messed up and my stuff was still there and either threw it away or room service threw it away. And so I got really scared. So I actually pushed a chair. I think it's one of the only pictures I have of this place. I pushed a chair up against the door because what I found out what happened was that I did hear voices outside my door the night before. Their system went down in the middle of the night and it wiped everyone that was staying there. And so they went around room to room, knocked on the door and said, hey, are you here? And... I was asleep or scared. I didn't hear the knock, whatever it was. So they thought, hmm, room's empty. So they resold the room the next night with my stuff in it. And that more so just freaked me out. And so, yeah, I ended up staying in the next room. Never got that toothbrush back. Never got the t-shirt back. Never got the Gatorade's back, which who cares? I don't even remember what t-shirt it was. It wasn't a work shirt, so it was fine. But yeah, so ever since then, I like double, triple lock. I um, normally, I don't have it on my, on this trip now, but normally I carry this like extendable stick from Amazon. I'll post a a thing or picture here um, that goes up against the door to like stop intruders from coming in Um, just for peace of mind. Really, I'm on the road so much that yeah, That was a pretty weird situation. But like I said, I stay in tens, if not sometimes hundreds of hotels a year. Um, And so if that's my worst story so far, then hey, I'll take it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have been enjoying the Ask Zach series. I feel like this is a little bit more of a chill one and it's not in my house. So that's kind of cool. If you do want to hear the personal terrible story, leave a comment. Maybe I'll share that on a live stream or something like that. Um, If you have a question for Ask Zach, leave it in the comment section down below. But until next time, good night, everyone.